Every good City Edition jersey tells the story of the team wearing it. Case in point, the Wizards cherry blossom uniforms from last season. This year's jerseys tell a story with monumental implications. I'm Brianna Thomas, a local DC author and historian, and I want to share some DC history with you. Here in the district, we are known for our epic monuments. But did you know there's a set of monuments that are older than these popular landmarks? Beyond the National Mall, there's modest markers of the city's earliest history, encompassing DC, Maryland, and Virginia. These markers are called boundary stones. In 1790, the Residence Act enabled President George Washington to choose a new home for the nation's capital. Washington, a trained surveyor, decided to move the seat of the federal government from Philadelphia to the district. The designated area for the capital was a total of 100 square miles formed from land ceded by neighboring states Maryland and Virginia. And thus, a design for the new city was set, a diamond spanning 10 miles on each side. To bring the diamond to life, the president hired French engineer Pierre Charles Lafont to begin city planning. But Lafont would need help in surveying the boundaries. So in 1791, Commissioner Andrew Ellicott from Baltimore recommended one of his acquaintances for the job. Self-taught black scientist, astronomer, and mathematician Benjamin Banneker. The free black man worked for months alongside Lafont to map out the district's terrain using his calculations to establish the boundary points. And on April 15, 1791, the first marker was placed at the southern corner at Jones Point in Alexandria. From there, brown to light gray, Aquia Creek sandstones were placed at each mile of the survey to mark the boundary of the new territory of Columbia. So where are these 40 markers located? 36 of these original boundary stones are hidden in plain sight in front and backyards, busy streets, apartment complexes, church parking lots, and neighborhood parks, while others are tougher to find, tucked away near cemeteries, forests, and bridges. So why does any of this matter? More than 200 years ago, boundary stones defined the origins of DC. These stones are the first landmarks of the district and the only monuments to connect us all, DC, Maryland, and Virginia. They are the roots of our community, serving as a visible connection to how we uniquely identify ourselves as the DMV. I got a chance to chat with Stephen Powers, a wizard super fan and super expert on Boundary Stones, the main inspiration behind this year's City Edition jerseys. This is my favorite stone of all 40s. It's the only one that's really left in its pristine condition. The Boundary Stones became a passion of mine because I'm a civil engineer, an amateur surveyor, and I love Washington, D.C. history. When my daughter was in second grade, we went to a couple of the stones in Arlington, and that's when I got Stones Fever. So it just started off as a school project? It started off as a school project. A little birdie told me you actually have some of the stone from that quarry? Yes, I do. So I was able to bring a piece of stone from a Quiet Creek quarry. It's a nice soft sandstone. You, you can hear, feel it, it's how light wow, it is, that is really light. for a stone. So when I, when I think about the boundary stones that are made with these stones out of that quarry, I have to, obviously, because we're talking about the Wizards, think about the City Edition jerseys. Are there any particular details connected to the Boundary Stones that really stand out to you? The red line itself. Okay. To, to, that calls out the boundary. And then using the monumental logo um, and replacing Washington Monument with the Boundary Stone itself is just fantastic. I mean, it really speaks to it and there's hunter green and bronze as trim on those jerseys. We restored 25 of the fences around the sites. We painted the fences hunter green and bronze. Mm. Nike liked those colors. So to see some of the colors that I, I put into the fences now on the, the Wizards jerseys is, is, is just really powerful. I knew about the stars and I knew about the, the outline of the city, but the fact 
that those two color pieces, components of that jersey, are there due to your direct it input. Is, it's just opened up so much to me be, to, to be a part of this. We're in the bowl, we're in the arena, we're having fun, but we're sitting in some rather special seats. Uh, you've got a story about why we're here right now. What is it about these seats that makes them so special? Well, this is my season ticket right here. So this is where I sit for all the Wizards games. Okay. And I just love it. We're behind the bench. And I also, because this is a tunnel, I get the elbow room. There you go. And, and nobody cuts in front of me. Smart <laughs> man. Smart <laughs> man. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you sharing this gift with us and the Wizards fans. And let's look forward to having some fun on the court. What do you say? On the court, and I look forward to taking you to a snow maybe one day. Done. All right.